What's the real game? Alibaba and NVIDIA suddenly announced partnership. The US sanctioned NVIDIA, whose access to the China market has been strictly limited, suddenly announced a partnership with Alibaba right after the US launched an anti-discrimination probe against them. Considering the US escalated restrictions on AI chip exports to China in May, this move looks like tearing down the house right in front of Washington's face. This can't be random. What's the hidden agenda? This isn't about selling chips at all. The so-called physical AI is essentially teaching AI to understand physics. For example, enabling a robot to autonomously determine, will this box fall if I move it this way? NVIDIA is providing the textbook, the software stack, which includes methodologies like simulation training and synthetic data generation. Alibaba provides the laboratory scenarios like logistics and auto manufacturing. It's like a Michelin star chef bringing their secret recipes into a chain restaurant. They can create a feast without even touching the hardware. Even more disruptive is that this textbook is far more profitable than the chips. NVIDIA's software service profit margin is a staggering 74.99%, which is much more lucrative than selling hardware. Since selling chips openly is now restricted, they are selling the secret recipe for cooking. This allows them to bypass the sanctions while retaining their foothold in the crucial Chinese market. This is a brilliant strategic move. Next, let's dissect this grand strategy. How did the US crush Japan's semiconductor industry in the 80s? And why are their own giants betraying them now? What are Nvidia and Alibaba's respective motivations? How many secrets are hidden within this ecosystem battle? Hi, history repeating itself? 80s Avengers vs. Today's Rebellious Sun. How ruthless was the US in 1986? At that time, Japanese semiconductors held a 45% global market share, and Intel was nearly defeated. The US immediately assembled the Semitech Alliance, with IBM and Motorola, while simultaneously using Section 301 to force Japan to sign the Semiconductor Agreement, restricting exports and raising bid prices. They also poured $1 billion into building a technological monopoly, successfully squeezing Japan's market share down to 20% by 2000. Now, the plot has reversed. The US has upgraded its chip sanctions four times since 2022, and in May 2025, even banned using US chips to train Chinese AI. Yet, their own giant, Nvidia, is the first to feel the strain. The Chinese market accounts for 30% of its revenue and the sanctions have made their H20 chips hard to sell, forcing them to resort to a save the country by a roundabout path through software. Analysis Commentary From a historical perspective, the US systematically suppressed Japan's semiconductor industry in the 1980s through a series of nationwide blockades, like the Semiconductor Chip Act, successfully curbing its momentum. However, in the current US-China tech rivalry, the US is trapped in a Sanction Paradox High-intensity chip export controls have not only failed to stop China's technological breakthrough but have spurred powerful indigenous innovation. The performance of Huawei's Ascend Supernode computing system is claimed to be up to six times that of its NVIDIA counterpart, marking a leapfrog breakthrough in high-end computing power in China. This blockade is also backfiring on US companies, NVIDIA, as the global GPU behemoth lost its massive Chinese market dueling to the sanctions, with its 2023 revenue in China dropping by an estimated 45% year-on-year. Facing massive economic losses, NVIDIA has not only repeatedly lobbied the US government to ease restrictions but has also sought survival through the development of China-specific, compliant chips. This, rebellious, behavior is essentially the inevitable choice dictated by market forces. The global technology supply chain is already deeply intertwined, a scenario where you are in me, and I am in you. Trying to forcibly sever it through political means not only forces companies to find alternative ways to survive but also severely damages the global technological collaboration ecosystem, potentially causing a systemic regression in global technological progress. 2. NVIDIA's triple win, making more money by selling methodology than chips. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang previously warned that sanctions will force China to self-develop 
and NVIDIA will be the first to die. This latest move is a textbook case of self-salvation. One more profit. Hardware gross margins max out at about 60%, but software reaches 74.99%. The integrated software stack, including Isaac Sim, can generate hundreds of millions in annual licensing fees from just automotive simulation training. To retaining the foundation, Alibaba's Baileyan platform has 200,000 developers and over 800,000 agents. NVIDIA uses its software to bind these users, allowing them to recapture the hardware market once sanctions ease. 3. Appeasing the government, by framing it as technical exchange. They can simultaneously prove to Congress that China can't do without U.S. technology and navigate around export restrictions. NVIDIA's counter-cyclical breakthrough amidst the global wave of chip control is a textbook operation in business warfare. As the U.S. government wields the stick of technological decoupling, this chip giant, with its flexible product strategy, is transforming the ban on chip exports to China into a market opportunity for new model iterations. The 74.99% software profit margin reported in its fiscal year 2024 earnings not only sets an industry record but also serves as a sharp retort to unilateral policies. Behind this number is the quiet escalation of global technological competition, from a simple blockade of hardware production capacity to a fight for dominance over operating systems, algorithm frameworks, and developer ecosystems. The regulatory paradox of the U.S. governments openly restricting but covertly allowing, is becoming increasingly evident. One moment, they restrict high-end GPU exports, and the next, they tacitly permit companies to release performance-reduced but still market-competitive alternative models. This contradictory policy has not achieved its technological containment goal. Instead, it has accelerated the restructuring of the global supply chain. The expansion of advanced packaging capacity at TSMC's Nanjing plant and the accelerated iteration of Alibaba Cloud's self-developed AI chips all confirm that while some politicians are preoccupied with technical barriers, companies and research institutions have already voted with their feet, opening up new pathways through open collaboration. History proves that only by breaking down technological barriers and building a global innovation ecosystem can the boundless potential of AI truly be unleashed to serve human society. 3. Alibaba's Time Battle Borrowing a Ship to Seize the Ecosystem Window While domestic chips are making breakthroughs, Alibaba's PPU is comparable to NVIDIA's H20. A fully mature ecosystem still requires at least three years. Alibaba understands that Time is life. By integrating NVIDIA's software stack now, the industrial AI training cycle for partners like BMW and Siemens can be reduced by 60%, and the code generation efficiency of Tony Lingma can increase by another 30%. Given that 70% of Fortune China 500 companies use generative AI, securing these use case scenarios early allows Alibaba to seamlessly connect with domestic chips when they rise. Even better is the learning by observation. NVIDIA's simulation training technology is exactly where Alibaba's humanoid robot and autonomous driving projects fall short. This collaboration is akin to getting the secret manual for free. Analysis Commentary The collaboration between Alibaba and NVIDIA is a precise blow that shatters the misconception that indigenous innovation equals closed-door development. In the long river of technological progress, borrowing a ship to sail, and indigenous innovation are never mutually exclusive opposites. They are complementary, symbiotic partners. Historically, in the 1970s, the Japanese semiconductor industry achieved its transformation from a technological follower to an industry leader in just over a decade, at one point holding over 50% of the global memory chip market. By introducing U.S. semiconductor patents and combining them with its own refined manufacturing and innovation system, Today, Alibaba's leveraging of NVIDIA's deep expertise in GPU architecture and the CUDA software ecosystem to address its own shortcomings in AI computing infrastructure and software algorithm optimization is an extremely shrewd strategic move. Looking at the global technology landscape, the development of the semiconductor industry itself is an epic story of collaboration and mutual success. A.S. Smell's lithography machine in the Netherlands integrates cutting-edge technology from over 3,000 suppliers in 40 countries, 
Apple's chip development relies on TSMC's advanced processes and ARM's architecture licensing. These vivid examples confirm that the essence of global technological development is mutual achievement. In the context of escalating technological blockades and fierce industrial competition, instead of remaining isolated in a closed door island and letting technological iteration stagnate, it is wiser to adopt an open and collaborative posture to achieve leapfrog innovation based on the absorption of global advanced technology. This attitude, which prioritizes the overall development of the industry, is not only responsible for the company but also a key driver for industry progress. 4. The Ecosystem War Begins, U.S. Blockade Forces a Chinese Solution Today's AI competition is no longer about chip benchmarking, but about ecosystem team battles. NVIDIA has the CUDA ecosystem, Microsoft relies on Azure to bind OpenAI, while China is adopting a wolf pack strategy. Huawei is building the Ascend Alliance with its open source mind suite, Alibaba is seizing scenarios through its partnership with NVIDIA, and Baidu's Kunlun chip has $1 billion orders. In contrast, the U.S.'s $52 billion investment from the 2025 CHIPS Act is largely being used by companies for dividend payouts, failing to form a cohesive force. Even more ironic, the U.S. is restricting Huawei's Ascend but cannot stop Alibaba from using NVIDIA software to train its large models. The door to the ecosystem can never be completely shut. The most profound revelation of this war is that technological hegemony simply doesn't work. The U.S. wants to maintain its ecosystem monopoly through blockades but forgets that the core of an ecosystem lies in users and scenarios. China has the world's largest number of AI application scenarios. Alibaba alone covers manufacturing, finance, and logistics, and this is its ultimate leverage. While the U.S. is still forming its small circle, China has already carved a new path through Open collaboration plus indigenous innovation. This is not only a victory for China but a hope for diverse technological development globally.